Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. It is always good to have more options for your off-grid solar needs. And today I have another solution for you that I am really excited about, and it's this. But before I get to the install of this new EG4 12,000 XP inverter, I wanna go over a few big things that really jumped out at me about this thing. Let's talk about those big things that jump out at me that are very different from the 6000 XP. We're gonna kinda of compare the two and you're gonna see really quickly that the 12000 XP is not a 6000 and a 6000 married together. So here's the biggest one. The 12000 XP can take up to 24,000 watts of solar PV input. That is mind boggling. But compare that to the 6000, which I love, this can only take in 8,000 watts of PV, and that's 4,000 watts on each of its two MPPT charge controllers. And here's another upgrade that helps out a lot when you are running your panels, and that is the 12,000 XP has two trackers for each MPPT for a total of four. The 6,000 XP only has one tracker on each MPPT, so you can only run two strings into this unit. That buys you a lot of options for adding and running new strings into your unit in the future. And if I didn't mention, that 24,000 watts of PV input is usable PV input. So you can have a load of 12,000 watts going through your house and you're still sending 12,000 watts to your battery bank. By comparison, you can overpanel your 6000s to 10,000 watts of input, but you're only using eight. So if you've got two 6000 XPs, that's 16 usable. Compare that with one 12,000 XP at 24,000 usable, you can see where that is just a huge upgrade. So you can see this is not really an apples to apples comparison with one 12,000 XP and two 6000 XPs. Right now, the 12,000 XP is 24.99. And if you were to try to equal those out, even though it's not apples to apples, two 6,000 XP's together is $2,800. Now you can see the value added to the 12,000 XP. Now here's another big thing to consider that jumped out right away at me. And that is since you have the opportunity for so much solar input on the 12,000 XP, that is gonna be very helpful for someone who lives in an area that has lower peak sun hours. I currently live in Texas, but I grew up in Michigan where the peak sun hours are much less than here. So the amount of panels that you can wire in to that 12,000 XP is going to give you an advantage in an area like that. And friends, think about this. If you've got a larger home that you are trying to take off grid, that extra panel capacity is going to really benefit you because you're going to need that extra charging capacity to charge your batteries faster for those larger loads that you have in that larger home. And that of course is extremely helpful in the winter time no matter where you're at. Now the voltage input for your PV is the same for the 12,000 XP and the 6,000 XP. It's a max of 480 volts DC. But of course that sweet spot is between 120 volts and 385 volts, the same as this. Now let's talk about batteries. It does state in the manual that it is recommended to have 400 amp hours worth of batteries connected to your 12,000 XP. But on the web page itself, it says it's a minimum to have 400 amp hours. So I really would recommend that. Now, just like the 6,000 XP, the 12,000 XP has a five-year warranty and you can parallel up to six of them together. That is a ridiculous amount of power. I don't know where that would be used except in a commercial application. Certainly not for my homestead. But of course, it's nice to have options. Now the idle consumption on the 12,000 XP is 70 watts. So keep that in mind when you're designing your system. For each of the 6,000 XPs, it's 30 watts each. So if you're comparing the two together in that way, it's fairly similar. A really big advantage if you're using AC input into that 12,000 XP is it has a 100 amp pass-through. That's plenty for my house, for sure. And again, as a comparison, each 6,000 XP has a 50 amp pass-through. So since this 12,000 XP is a little bit heavier, it's got the same type of wall hanging system as the 12 kPV and the 18 kPV. The unit itself weighs about 100 pounds. If you can get it up on the wall yourself, awesome. If not, use a friend. 
And that's what we are gonna do now. I'm gonna dismantle this current system and get that 12,000 XP up on the wall. Let's go. And after I'm done hanging this, I will add another exciting surprise to the system. You're gonna to have to stick around to find out what that is. Okay, we've got one of our 6,000 XP's off the wall and in the box for the 12,000 XP, we've got this cardboard template. We've also got this bracket. Our bracket holes line up with our template holes. Now this bracket needs to be screwed into the studs because the 12,000 XP is around 100 pounds. So if you're upgrading your system, you might need to rearrange a few things like your sub panel if necessary. For the height of your template, I recommend putting this bottom 45 and 9 16 inches above the floor. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. Once you get this bottom that far off the floor and aligned with your studs, you're gonna drill your holes for your bracket. These are the lag bolts that come with the inverter. These are what you're gonna attach the bracket to the wall with. But in my opinion, they are a little short because I have to go through a half an inch of the hardy board, one half an inch of the drywall underneath, and then the rest is in the stud. And actually that's not that much. So I'm electing to use my own, which is about three quarters of an inch longer. Okay, I think that's it. Here's the surprise I was talking about. This is the new EG4 Indoor Power Pro battery. And I'm gonna be doing a full video on these in the future and talking about how to connect them to a charge verter, how to get them to communicate with your other server rack batteries, all of the above. But today we are going to be connecting this to our 12,000 XP. We also got the conduit box kit for this system. And I think this is gonna make the install super nice and super clean, like the 12K PV install I just did at my friend's house. If you haven't seen that video or the specs on that, click up here. So this is why I positioned this inverter at the height I did on the wall. Now let's talk about the wiring for this. Okay, let's start over here with the battery connections first. You can see we have this huge 300 amp breaker here for our battery connections. We've got two positive terminals and two negative terminals. And there is a lot of room in here. This is really nice compared with the 12K PV or the 18K PV, because you can actually get your fingers in here. Now, the reason they have two positives and two negative terminals is for your connection to your main battery, and it can handle up to 250 amps. So for safety, they've got two each. And in each box that the batteries come in, you have two negative cables and two positive cables. The cables come with this Amphenol connector on one end. This will connect to your battery, and then the stripped end will connect into the lugs. And since this is fine-stranded wire, to make this easier, we bought these large ferrules that we will be crimping on the ends to make it easier to put it into those lugs. I'll leave links to these and the crimpers that we have in the description below the video, along with all of our other tools that we use for our solar installs. Okay, let's look at all of the other connections before I start doing this. Over here, we've got our battery communications, our dip switches, and our paralleling ports. Down here, we have our dry contact ports. This breaker right here is a smart load breaker. So this can be used as a dedicated circuit for something like a water heater or your electric um, vehicle charger, whatever it is. You can program this to run this load in the smartest, most efficient way possible. Okay, over here we've got a 100 amp breaker. This is for our load. This goes out to our sub panel and then ultimately to our main panel in our house. Now it calls for three gauge wire, but you can actually go smaller because the three gauge is basically for your grid connection, which is over here and you are not doing that 100 amp pass through. If you're off grid, you don't need to run three gauge to this. You only need to run wire big enough for 50 amps instead of 100. So like I said, it's not necessary to use the three gauge, but I had this, so we are going to use it. It's always good to upsize your wires. Next to that, we've got our generator input, and then like I said, the grid input. Down here, we have our neutral bus. We've got our uh, ground or earth ground bus right here. Over here, we've got four PV inputs for the one MP MPPT and then four for the second MPPT. And this will give you the opportunity to parallel here at the inverter two different strings. 
And then over here, of course, is our PV shutoff. Before fussing around with everything, make sure all of your breakers are off and you're checking for any voltage. For our initial connections, we are going to take the conduit box off, and that's because I will have to mount the battery bracket to the wall and then lift that up into place. So this will slide in between at the end. And then in the near future, once we get everything arranged properly, we will be connecting everything together with conduit. But at this point, we're just gonna make the initial connections and fire it up for you. Okay, so before you connect your batteries, it's highly recommended that you ground everything together, all the batteries, the inverter, and run that back to your earth ground for your house. So that's what I've done. These are grounded together, grounded together here. They run into our sub panel and back to our earth ground rod for the house. Now we can start connecting other things. Now you're gonna notice that I'm gonna connect the incorrect color wires to our first PV input. And that is because years ago when I set this up, I did reverse these two wires on just this string. So I've got them labeled here. So if you're wondering about that, why I have black to positive and red to negative, that's why. And it's always recommended that you put ferrules on stranded wire. So I always do it on my PV wire like this. And I've got this ferrule crimper, which works really well. Like I said, this is just the initial setup. So I don't have any conduit nipples for these either, but I will be getting them when I connect these holes to the conduit box below. And of course, make sure the PV disconnect on your inverter is off also. Next comes the batteries. And it says in the manual that these are eight millimeter, but I have an eight millimeter and these do not fit. This is a 5 16 and it fits perfect. Like I mentioned before, we did buy these large ferrules that go on the stranded ends that make it a lot easier to put them in the lugs on the inverter. We also did have to buy a crimping tool. So I will link this crimping tool. It wasn't that expensive at all, only about 35 or $40. So the crimper comes with these different dies and they're magnetized. You can put them inside and these are for the two aught wire. These are nice wide lugs. You can fit four aught in these. So it's really easy to get this two aught up in here. Just crank this down, and if you want the torque specs, they are contained within the manual. If the lug is a little loose, make sure you tighten it up or get it back in, into position. This one did rotate when I tighten this down. We've got our knockouts for our battery cable. I should have run this up the other way, but I'll run it down. And what we're gonna do here is take the amphenol connector and just pop it on to our battery. It's super simple. It'll just click in. Now, of course, this is gonna look a lot different with the conduit box, our AC out running through the conduit box and the battery flush against the wall. But for now, and for initial testing, this is how we're gonna run it. Now we can run the other positive, the two negatives, and then communications cables. And the manual in the battery box is gonna show you how to connect everything. This is our first setup. We do have three batteries, but we're just gonna do this for initial testing. In the 12,000 XP box, we've got the Wi-Fi dongle, We'll be connecting that later. I'm not gonna worry about that right at the moment. We've got our paralleling cable, if we have two of those, and then we also have our battery communications cable. Additionally, with each battery, we do have a comms cable that is used to communicate between each battery. You're obviously going to only connect one of your batteries to your inverter in this battery communications port right here. On your battery that communicates with your inverter, you want this first dip switch down. Your inverter communications will be via this port, and then your battery communications between batteries will be one of these two. On your second battery in the string, you will have your second dip switch down and use the battery communications port on this one. As we discussed earlier in the video, we have two batteries because the 12,000 XP requires a minimum of 400 amp hours to run properly. Just one of the indoor wall mount batteries is 280 amp hours. So not enough for the 12,000 XP, you need two of them. Or again, you would need four of the 100 amp hour server rack style batteries like the EG4LL. We're not quite done yet. We need to parallel our batteries together. And to do that, you need this extra kit. And these battery cables come with the Amphenol connectors on both ends. And that's to connect to the top of each battery. And once again, I will have everything that you need for this type of setup linked in the description below the video. And again, remember, I have a $50 coupon code for you. So go below and check out those links. All right, let's start it up. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on the battery breaker on the inverter. 
Then I'm gonna turn the breaker on on the battery. That's down here on the side, so we're gonna turn that on. Then we're gonna switch on the BMS. Battery's coming to life. That's gonna charge up our capacitors in our inverter in there, it just popped on. We're gonna switch on our second battery and turn on the BMS on that one too. All right, check it out, we are up and running. We've got our battery connected and you can see that on the screen. We don't have any PV coming in right now because it is dark outside. And we don't have any loads connected. But let me give you the quick rundown on what I think of this thing so far. I'm super excited for this 12,000 XP and in the next video, we are gonna see what it runs in the house. We're gonna max it out and do a load test on it. Also in the future, we will be working through the settings and we will also work on connecting the Wi-Fi dongle. Okay, first impressions, connectability is fantastic. There's a lot of room to play with in here and the lugs and all the connection terminals are really nice. Bottom cover right here is held on with four screws that are this size. And this is about twice the size as what they are on the 6000 XP. These are better, but if EG4 could do something like the 18K PV or the 12K PV and just have a swinging hinge door, that would make things a lot easier. Although these are much easier to put in and take out. Now, initial thoughts on the screen, uh, not great. They could really upgrade this screen. It's very rudimentary and it seems to be uh, less contrast when you're looking at it than especially the 6000 XP and the 12K PV. It has a lot of information, but it is a challenge to try to see it. This is not a touch screen, and that's no big deal to me. I don't have any issue with using these navigation buttons over here. On the side of the unit, it has the filters for the cooling fans on the other side as they pull air through the unit, and these are really nice. These come off super easy, unlike the 6000 XP, which also has those tiny little screws on the side. I will also be doing a separate video on the wall mount batteries, as you can see, this screen on just the battery itself is much more of an upgrade than the one on the 12,000 XP inverter. And what I'm loving right away is the room that these are giving me in my space. This is a very small room and these save me so much space on the floor. Well, that's it friends. Look for those other videos to come out very soon. And if you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. If you like this video and you are interested in some of the other systems that we set up on our homestead, click these videos now. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.